In this video, we're going to specialize to measures on the real line, R, with the sigma algebra, that is the Borel sigma algebra. You'll remember this is just the sigma algebra generated by the open sets of R, or the intervals. It's also generated by intervals of the form A, B. And it turns out that these measures, measures on, on this space, take a very uh, special form that can be characterized using a special class of functions called monotone functions. And in the even more special case of probability Borel measures, this characterization, characterization takes a particularly simple form, a very sort of nice, tidy form. So what is it? Well, first, we need a definition. We need a couple definitions. A Borel measure on R Borel measure is a measure on the Borel sigma algebra, on R with the Borel sigma algebra. So it's a measure on this measurable space, if you will. I haven't used that term before. A measurable space just means a set along with some sigma algebra. So that's all a Borel measure is, Borel measure on R. But more generally, a Borel measure on some other space uh, is just a, a measure on that space that's set with its corresponding Borel sigma algebra. And a CDF, cumulative distribution function, distribution function, is a function on the reals to the reals. It's a function which we write capital F, a real valued function on the reals, such that 1, F is non decreasing, 2, F, well, let me say what I mean by this first. So, F is non decreasing, what does that mean? That just means that if x is less or equal to y, then that implies f of x is less or equal to f of y. So it's it looks like this. A non-decreasing function looks something like this. It can flatten out, but it can't go back down. 2, a CDF is right continuous. And what does that mean? That means that the limit as x approaches some number a from above, use this notation for uh, the limit from above, f of x, so the limit of f of x as x approaches a from above equals f of a. Now I, I emphasize from above, it might not converge to f of a if x is approaching a from below. So it's right continuous but not necessarily continuous. And 3, as x converges to, as x goes to infinity, f of x converges to 1, and one more condition for as x goes to minus infinity, f of x goes to zero. So there's four conditions for a CDF, cumulative distribution function. So let me, uh, for your intuition here, write continuous. What does this look like? Well, uh, again, if I have some function here, and it's coming along, and we're looking at it from the right, 
and it gets to some point, it can jump, but it has to include that point where it jumps. So it doesn't include the point uh, here, but it does include the one as it approached from the right. So it can have jumps, but you always have to include the point from the right hand side. Okay, now we are ready for the theorem. So that's a beautiful little theorem. I'll leave a little bit there for you to see. Okay, here's a theorem. This is nice. One. If F is a CDF, then there's a unique Borel probability measure on R. Unique Borel probability measure on R such that the measure of the sets of this form minus infinity to x equals f of x. So this is for any x in R. And two, so that's the first part of the theorem, first statement. Second statement is a sort of converse. If P is a Borel probability measure, on R, then there exists a unique CDF F satisfying this condition. There is a unique CDF F such that F of X equals P of the set from minus infinity to X including X for all X in R. So it's the same condition and it's important to include X here in this set. That is, that is to say, there is an equivalence between CDFs and Borel probability measures. And CDFs and Borel probability measures. So in other words, for any CDF, we get a unique Borel, we get a unique probability measure. For any probability measure, we get a unique CDF. And this is uh, this holds in the special case of the real numbers and the Borel sigma algebra. But it's a beautiful little result. And it's a very nice characterization of uh, a very uh, interesting class of measures that we'll be dealing with. So since these CDFs, these cumulative distribution functions, are so important, let me build your intuition a little bit for what they look like. So here was the definition of a CDF, and let me just draw an example of one. This is our very poorly drawn x-axis and y-axis. Let me try that again. Oh my goodness. There we go. Third time's a charm. So maybe better to say f of x. So way over here, as x is going to minus infinity, 
f of x is going to 0. So this is getting really small down here, and eventually it's going to be 0. And it could come up here. It could jump. It could have another jump. It can flatten out. And it never drops back down. Keeps going up. And eventually, as x goes to infinity, f of x converges to 1. So that's 0, that's 1, and it's converging asymptotically to 1. So that's, that's what, a, what a CDF looks like. Sometimes it has jumps, sometimes it doesn't. So hopefully this builds your intuition for a CDF, and this characterization by this theorem gives you a very nice way to think about what a probability measure is doing in terms of its CDF. And this will be useful later on as we're looking at random variables and other interesting things, on, especially on the real line.